All right, day 24 of the 30 day challenge to vlog every day. Uh, I didn't do a vlog yesterday because it was so hectic. So I'll either do two today or I'll do, uh, I'll extend it another day. So I do a full 30 day challenge. Um, the topic today will be on history. I finished reading, oh, I think it was, I don't know, for several years, there's a book called The Lessons of History by William Durant that was recommended by tons of people and it was rated super high on Goodreads. And uh, I finally read it maybe a, two months ago. And it's very short. You can read it in like, I don't know, two days or even a day if you just want to push through it. And it's kind of a blend between like history and philosophy. Not so much like a history of philosophy, but more like looking at life and, and uh, human life through the lens of uh, like a historical view, but then have, have like a few elements of philosophy involved into it. Um, so like uh, I wrote a short review of it, which I can kind of read and then pull out a few quotes that I thought were kind of interesting and kind of talk through them. But the topic is more going to be on like, just like people lived before us and then us sharing this, you know, living all together on this earth now and kind of looking at things in the more like the grand scale of things. Um, I think history is interesting to study, not only because it's fascinating to see like, you know, what brought us to this point and why, like all the things in life that are influenced by the previous people before us but also um, just like, cause it's incredibly interesting and fulfilling. Like even if it was completely worthless to study history, um, I think it's still like a worthwhile endeavor if it's as like a hobby or something. I think a lot of people get really caught in, caught up into it. Um, there's this guy, Dan Carlin, Hardcore History. If you haven't listened to Hardcore History, it is a fascinating kind of podcast. They're kind of like long form, three hour sort of things, but he does them on different things like uh, the Genghis Khan and Wrath of the Khans is what he calls it and how they basically conquered all of Asia all the way almost to Western Europe. And they did one called Blueprint from Again on World War One. And he, he does tons of them, but they're really informative, really interesting, and like really worthwhile. So um, regarding Lessons of History book, I wrote this uh, short little paragraph on it. And it was, it was kind of on um, like over the course of history, human behavior has changed, but human nature has not. Humans 50,000 years ago had pretty much the exact same instincts as we do today, but we behave quite differently. No matter who is in power, the rewards gradually accrue to the most clever and talented individuals. Ideas are, are the strongest things of all of history because they can be passed down and change the behavior of future generations. Um, he goes in and says something, I think these are quotes from his book, um, much, what, much of what we call intelligence is the result of individual education, opportunity, and experience. Education is the progressive discovery of one's own ignorance. If, it, if education is the measure of progress, then we have progressed more than ever before. Education is the transmission of as much, much, of as much, mm, much, education is the transmission of as much of human heritage and learning as we can fully achieve. Consider education not as the painful accumulation of facts and dates and, rain, uh, and rains, nor merely the necessary preparation of individuals to earn his keep of the world, but as the transmission of our mental, moral, technical, and aesthetic heritage as fully as possible to as many as possible for the embellishment of, man, of man's understanding, control, and enjoyment of life, the heritage that we can now more, that we can now more fully transmit is richer than ever before. It is richer than the, the pericles, for it includes the Greek following that followed him, richer than Leonardo's, for it includes him and the Italian Renaissance, richer than Voltaire, for it embraces all of the French Enlightenment and its enumical uh, dis dissemination. It's kind of like a, it's, 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 it's some deep points, um, but he has these really good quotes. He says, if progress is, is real despite our whining, it's not because we were born any healthier, better, or wiser than the infants, infants born in the past, but because we were born to a richer heritage, born on a higher level of that pedestal which the accumulation of knowledge and art raises as the ground and support of our being. The heritage rises and the man rises in proportion as he receives it. Yeah, I mean, these are, he has some interesting takes on like, what is education? Um, what is progress? What is intelligence? What are these things? Um, yeah, I think I, I like a, a deeper level. I had this weird realization a couple of years ago of like, you look at the human history, like 50,000 50, years is like a huge amount of time from like the human human imagination perspective. But in like the cosmic perspective, it's like nothing, right? But 
fundamentally all that matters in, in our lives is what we feel and what we experience, right? Um, and if 50,000 years seems and feels like a long time, then emotionally it feels like a long time to us. That's all that matters, even if it, in, the, in a more objective view, it, it isn't a long time. But um, if you think about how long that is and that there's groups of people throughout time that, uh, that share the planet for that period of time, it's kind of fascinating how like objectively connected everybody is that's sharing the world at this time, right? I mean, there's more people on, on planet, on, on Earth now um, than ever before, so it's hard to, to feel connected to everybody, but we all kind of share this fucking, this rock floating through space here. And we all, at a deep level, I think, um, at the, the most fundamental level, every conscious being doesn't want to suffer and wants a well-being, right? So regardless of whatever the cultural differences are, whatever the religious beliefs are, whatever the your fundamental objectives are of how to get to these places, it all comes back down to consciousness. Like everything comes down to this fundamental thing of like of being, right? And, and the feelings that being creates amongst us, everything we do. And um, if you think of it in like a really a grand scale of things, like we're sharing this planet with these, these people, like everything in life is temporary, right? Like everything comes and goes, lives and dies, right? And even if you you uh, meet a girl when you're 14 years old and you fall in love with her and you're with her for until you die, one person's gonna die before the other, right? Like every experience, all of our family will die, will die, all of our friends will die, all of our relationships will die. And it's just like the temp recognizing the temporariness of everything puts things into perspective in a, in a more uh, objective way where it's like, like because everything is temporary, we should we should really value it, but we should also not take things so seriously and have these like rules that that kind of block where we are expected to be and go. Um, and you know, if you look out throughout human history, you can learn a lot about human behavior and how, how people acted and why they acted a certain way and why we act the way we act today and why we believe what we believe today. And it's quite hard to actually, when you're with, when you're within a culture or a society or an era of human life where there's all these s social pressures and stuff, it's very hard to like step outside of, um, the, of, of that and try to view life differently. So like, um, there's this, there's these people who study like peak civilization, like when civilizations peak and start declining. And when you're in the civilization as it's peaking, it's very, very hard to actually recognize when it's peaking because it, you don't have foresight or hindsight really like it's you're just in it um and you know maybe we're in peak civilization already and civilization's declining who, who knows that's kind of a, a bigger question but the bigger idea is like fundamentally we all just kind of share this planet we're all making our way through it like sharing these experiences and meeting each other and sharing ideas and striving to do the things in life we want to do and like we're all sharing this this planet together like trying to do the same thing you know so it's just like motivation to like help each other, be friendly to each other, do things with each other, not take life so seriously and just like live. We're, we're a part of history and we'll eventually when we die, be a stat of history when in 50 years from now or 100 years from now or 500 years from now, people will talk back to, you know, oh, the people in the 2000s, what were they doing? Here's how they lived. Here's how they believed. Here's what they believed. Here's why they did what they did. And we're in that now, you know, we're creating, we're shaping history and we're, we're shaped from the past of it and we're going to shape the future of it. But it's just like an important realization, um, and and for me it was it was pretty mind blowing. Just motivation to do good, do good to people, be well to people, um, enjoy life, make the most of every day, do all these fun things in life, and uh, don't take it all so seriously. It's all it's all a game to play, and we're all in the same game. So uh, I'll leave it at that for uh, day twenty four. See you all tomorrow.